Yo guys, what's going on? Thanks for coming back to another episode of Aura Audio. And today, we're going to be talking about the challenges of hacking stuff. Specifically, Game Boy Advance ROMs. But in general, this applies to sort of all principles of hacking. Shout out to Toddy FF, who made a suggestion for us to look at the game Harvest Moon, Friends of Mineral Town. That is the game we are going to be looking at today. And this game was something that challenged me when I was trying to hack it. So the big challenge behind hacking stuff um, is understanding what file you're looking at. So in this case, we're looking at a .gba file, which is the file extension for a Game Boy Advance ROM binary. And so that's the thing we have to remember is when we're looking at these files inside of our tile editor, our graphics editor, we're looking at ones and zeros, whether we know it or not. Because ones and zeros are like the atoms or the molecules, the smallest parts of computing. And these are what make up these pixels that we see as light, the pixels you are watching right now on YouTube. And even sound is also made up of these ones and zeros. Yes, sometimes it's compressed in an MP3, but say like a WAV file is pretty much just straight up ones and zeros almost. Another thing to keep in mind is source code versus machine code. So good example I have for that. Got my cereal right here. And in, I like to think of food as this kind of principle of source code versus machine code. So source code would be, we have the ingredients for this cereal. We know how to make it. We've got all the necessary, necessary ingredients to compile that serial. Now machine code is what we have right now. We just have this serial. We may not know what ingredients are in it by just looking at it. We would have to dig deeper and find out exactly what ingredients are inside of this serial. So that is the principle behind that. And you can guess what we're looking at when we hack these ROMs. We're looking at the machine code. The, the developers usually don't release the source code. So that's something to keep in mind. And because of that, there's also no standardized layout of these files. We don't know which bits go to what. We're just making guesses. And so is the program that we're using. And so the palettes aren't always going to be where we think they are going to be. Generally, they're before whatever graphics we're looking for or after. But they're not always right before or right after. And that is a big challenge. So let's go ahead and open up Tile Molester and we'll go ahead and check out Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town, which is a fun game. I've been playing it a little bit. Let's actually go to the game first. So I'm gonna open Emu and just kind of play this. Love the music. All right, so we're just gonna do something simple. Let's look for, say this cow. I'm gonna look for that cow. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I will go ahead and open up the file, ROMs, and then Harvest Moon Mi Mineral Town. All right, so I'm gonna put this in the full screen, do what we've been doing. Go check out the last videos if you haven't seen those. Definitely recommend it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and look. Just see. Do our normal process. First, let's check. Okay, what's our codec? It's the codec of the Game Boy Advance. 4BPP linear reverse order. Now, our palette, that should be 15. Okay? And we got our default palette, which we're using right now. All right, now let's continue looking. Now that we got the right format. Very hard to tell. Okay, so here we have some graphics. I'm not sure if they are the cow though. I'm gonna keep looking. I actually don't know where the cow is this time. So I'm actually doing this, just improvising for you guys. Okay, so this looks like something. This looks like something. So 
what would I do? I would do the bit shift, which is where we get the bits so they're in line. Makes things a bunch cleaner. So we want to make it so we don't have any scan lines. We don't want any scan lines at all. So we got to find the right place. There's a scan line right there. Looks like this is getting more and more messed up. Can't tell. It's really hard. This is another challenge is we don't know how the bits are ordered. One of the biggest challenges. See if we just if we adjust it that way, we get a little tail there. It looks perfect here. And now it's like all messed up again. But here, it's fine. So I'm guessing here, right? That would be the way it should be. Let's see. So first instinct, I'm going to look for where my palette would be. Um, this right here is looking like a palette. So I'm going to go ahead and go to that. Now that I think of it, this looks like a palette as well. But I'm going to still do this one and see what happens. So. 00659D5C. So I'm going to go to my hexadecimal converter. Link will be in the description. And I'm going to enter in that number. D5C. Decimal number. There we go. We're going to go to our palette, import from this file, and we'll go ahead and paste that in there and tell it the size. Okay, so. It looks right, but not really. <laughs> you see what I mean? Um, and we could do the same process. We can check and see what palettes we have before. So I'm going to go back to my default because this doesn't look great. Um, I'll even try this one. Let's go ahead and try that one. zero zero six five nine so the point of this is it's really not clear where this palette is located at I really don't have any idea and this is one of the struggles of this process so yeah it's okay but still not looking right and we know we've aligned this properly because you can see the scan lines if we don't have it aligned properly. So let's go ahead, try another one. Let's go to the top of the file this time. And I will do, this is looking like a palette right there. So I will go to that one, enter in the number. Six, four, F7DC, copy that, and then go to my palette and paste it in. Okay, this is looking a little bit better. Now, it's looking like mainly this is for the sheep here, but you can see there's still some chaos, still something that feels like missing. It's just this feeling in your gut. You're like, I know this is looking right, but it doesn't look absolutely right. And so that's the thing is not all of these games are going to have palettes right before the graphics or right after the graphics. There's just no standard for that. There's, there's, that's not a standard because we're looking at binary files. And so it's really up to the game developers and really up to the programming language, the source code that they use to make the game. These, these might even be, um, there might even be some drawn out graphics that aren't stored as tiles. There's so many things that are challenging about it. But let's transition from this. We'll come back to it on Thursday, hopefully. But let's talk about some strategies that you can use to kind of conquer this, I don't know where the palettes are, what am I going to do? Am I just never going to find them? What do you do? What do you do as somebody who's getting into hacking or technology computing? Well, first step is keep playing around with it. 
that's what I've been doing honestly for all of these videos. Um, if I go back to one of these other ones, let's open another one. One that I am familiar with. I'm going to open up Rockman, which we were playing with a couple days ago, I think. It was the other day. And I'm just going to go for something I've already found. So let's see here. Um, these are looking promising. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And I'm going to go to this palette right here. Which these are clearly, these things right here are clearly palettes. I don't know if you guys can tell. But they're just obvious to me because I've been doing this for a little bit. They may be even more obvious to other people. And they may be less obvious to other people as well. There's all sorts of levels to this. So let's go ahead and copy that and add it to our palettes. For these last videos, these last couple ROM hacking videos, which is if you haven't seen part one and part two, definitely check those out. I will leave those in the description. But anyway, for these last videos, I spent hours messing around with this, trying to figure out where those palettes were. And because I'm not a graphics person, I don't know graphics. I don't know how the Game Boy graphics work, but I spent hours just trying things, okay? I didn't blow up my computer by doing that. My computer's still here, but things didn't work when I tried them most of the time. But then I found the ways that did work just by trying it. Second strategy that helps more than just trying and failing if you get discouraged there are a lot of videos out there that can help us learn the structure of memory. So that maybe you want to learn about the structure of these Game Boy Advance files. Because even though they are in the machine code, there are ways we can get the ingredients behind these files, get kind of disassemble them, if you will. I'm not sure how they do that with food. I'd be interested to learn, but I'm pretty sure it's similar to this. Yeah, disassembling, it's another thing. Um, there's a video I linked in one of my other videos on uh, ROM hacking, which this is a great video. Um, I forgot this guy's name, but this guy's channel is great, and he goes into all the details about modifying, say, the text in one of these um, Super Nintendo Entertainment games and that's all through things called pointers so pointers are kind of something important something i'd recommend getting into if you're if you're starting to learn about memory first learn about variables and all that but once you kind of get a grip on it pointers are something that is powerful because as we see in this video you can modify the text in the game and this video is these next couple videos which i'll also link are great examples of just learning videos if you don't know what pointers are if you're stuck on what they are this is pointers visualized through Lego blocks and this is just kind of one of the easier videos I've found that explained and helped me learn about pointers educating yourself if you know the concepts behind behind memory then just look up a concept you're not familiar with and that's often a great way to build some confidence and then when you're experimenting later you can come back with knowledge more knowledge on the subject and finally this is something i need to do more often but i think we all need to do it more often we all need a mental break we can't i couldn't just sit here guys and just code all day i have school I have a bunch of other things and also you do need sleep or else yeah if you go without sleep you would probably die but yeah taking a mental break i know there is there's this saying that i've heard eat sleep code repeat and there's a whole bunch of t-shirts and i found a couple articles which are like this is just crap like that's not what you're supposed to do but I see how these people interpreted this phrase as it's either coding or nothing, right? You're going to spend your whole life coding 
to get good at it. And I kind of interpreted it a little bit differently. See, as somebody who's studying both music and technology, I kind of interpreted this as don't just focus on the subject of coding, but take that and apply it to other things or learn other things outside of coding. So I know this is kind of general where it says eat, like just eat some food, right? Get your cereal or sleep, which are two things that are really important for your mental health. If you don't eat, if you don't sleep, then you're done for. That's something like once you eat and once you sleep, then you're kind of ready to get back at it. So that's something to think about. That's just kind of how I interpret it. This phrase, I know a lot of people hate it and I can see where they're coming from on that because I get it. I totally agree. You shouldn't just code. Like the way you get good at coding is not just by coding all day, sitting in a dark room like the stereotype where you just like sit in your basement or whatever with the blinds code closed, just coding all day. That's not at all. Actually, it's really healthy for programmers to get great access good exercise um, often when I was back when I was doing working on my Game Boy series last summer I spent a lot of time going for walks when I couldn't figure out something and just kind of getting outside like seriously the weather is really nice today so um, it's really important to focus on your mental health and this phrase could be anything it could be practice marimba sleep code repeat like it can be applied to your interest but the whole point is don't just code, like do something else. Spend your day doing what you want to do. And then you can always come back to the code. I hope this video was informative for you guys. And um, Toddy, I'm sorry that I couldn't figure out the game yet. I'm working on it, but I will hopefully get back to you guys on Thursday. But I challenge you guys to follow me and follow my steps we're going to learn this together. We're going to learn how this game is structured and learn how we can approach this challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let's learn together. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.